Read when you get there. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Amen. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord would not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thy labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the Sabbath day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Amen. Amen. Uh, Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, and pick it uh, up at verse 13 and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Revelation 22, verses 14 and 15. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters on whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. You know, brothers and sisters, for those who uh, want to say that God's royal law is no more, when Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed one of God, was in the flesh, the first thing he stated was that think not that he come to destroy the law or the prophets. I have come not to destroy, but to fulfill. He said, heaven and earth shall pass away before one jot or one tittle in any wise pass from the law until all be fulfilled. He said, therefore I say unto you that whosoever uh, do not the commandments and teach others not to keep them shall be the least in the kingdom. But those who do the commandments and teach them shall be great in the kingdom of heaven. Amen. And I ask you a question. Is the kingdom of heaven set up? The kingdom from heaven, is it set up? No. no. Well, why are you looking like you are uh, confused? <laughs> so therefore, you're still supposed to be keeping the commandments. Amen. And a man asked him a question. Good master, what good thing shall I do to enter into the kingdom? Or get eternal life? Jesus answered him plainly. Keep the commandments. He said, which? He, the Lord started quoting laws out of the Ten Commandments. And here is the last book of the Bible. Jesus in his glorified state as God in the fullness. Not taking nothing from the Father, because he's there too. He said, if you want to be blessed, keep the commandments. And guess what? That you may enter into the gates of the city for eternal life. And those who are outside the city, guess what? what? They are lawbreakers. They refuse to keep the commandments of God. So they're in that lake of fire outside the city. Is there you want to be? No. Huh. I hope not. 
So, brothers and sisters, we've been in this life, the man family, for almost 6,000 years. And man is far from the image that God wanted him to be other than the outward appearance. The hands, the feet, the eyes, the ears. Yeah, God had all those parts. Because we in his image. Outwardly. But inwardly, we far short. And that's how it's been since Adam failed in the Garden of Eden. And uh, it's been a recovery ever since. And God wants us to be just like him in the fullness, not just outward appearing, but inwardly also. And that's what we're going to be putting emphasis on today. The inward man and how those uh, attributes of God is developed, which is also called the fruits of the spirit. And so without further ado, we're just going to go back from the beginning and bring it on down to today. Because guess what? Just like the Lord, uh, just like uh, God brought the flood on the whole creation and destroyed every living thing except one person, Noah, because he was righteous and his righteousness brought blessings upon his family his wife, his three sons, and their wives that brought uh, one family, God saved one family out of an untold number of inhabitants back in the day. But I got news for you, brothers and sisters. Jesus said, just like the days of Noah, so shall be the second coming of the Messiah himself. And guess what? Noah's generation was wicked. So wicked that the Lord had to, you know, he felt sorry that he made man. And that he had to destroy him. But guess what? There's another destruction coming. But it's not going to be by water. It's going to be by fire. So, brothers and sisters, God wants you to be just like him. And the title of this lesson is The Fruits of the Spirit. The image of God in man and keys to enter into the kingdom of God. And you know what? We talk about the fruits of the Spirit. You know, it's taken lightly. But that's where the real power of God lies in. His attributes. And you know, and to, to uh, serve God you at least got to you know, find out what he like and what he don't like. And the Lord said he hate pride and arrogancy. He hate those who sow discord among the brothers. It told us seven things that God hate. He says it's abomination to him. You can read that in, uh, I believe it's, Psalms, the 16th chapter. But anyway, uh, let's go to Genesis, the uh, first chapter. Genesis, the first chapter. And we're just going to give a little uh, briefing on past history of man and just bring it on down to the present state. Because... Uh, Man broke God's commandments. And like he told our fathers, the Israelites, the seed of uh, the fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he told Israel, I put life and death before you. He was talking about his commandments. Life, if you keep his commandments, 
death if you choose to break his commandments. And guess what? They all, they call, death is called a curse. See, curses and blessings. Life is a blessing. Life is what you make out of it in regard to how you perform in God's commandments. And so the even stands today. Life and death, blessings and curses. Choose. So uh, we're going to pick this up in uh, Genesis, the first chapter, but we're going to uh, stop at, uh, begin at verse 20. Because I want you to take note of something. Uh, begin reading. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life and a fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of the heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. You notice it said after his kind. Read. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let the fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Uh huh. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beasts of the earth after his kind. And it was so. So uh, these creatures that he created, you know that they said, the Lord said that they created after their kind, they was re-multiplying uh, after their kind. Read. And God made the beasts of the earth after his kind, mm -hmm. and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. So when they was re-multiplying, it was exactly duplicating themselves. Read. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And you notice the guy said, let us make man in our image, and after our likeness, but not after our kind. God is a spirit, being. He's made, out, he's made from a substance called spirit. It's beyond our comprehension, brothers and sisters. But I know one thing. He could walk through the walls. He could turn visible and be uh, invisible. And uh, he can see you, but you, and you can't see him. He hear you, but you don't even know he's there. That's the power of a spiritual being. He created even the invisible things. That's the power of a spiritual being. And God said, let's make man, read that verse uh, 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. But they were not the, his kind. And that was a, what, that's what was the whole subject of being born again about. Man have not yet understood what the fullness of being born again. But anyway, uh, we're not talking on that subject per se, but what it leads up to at the end result, you got to be in the fullness of God, mind, and body. Whoever's talking about you being born again today, do not understand what they say nor what they do. Because you got to have a change of body. God is working on the mind, but until you had that, that uh, body to complete it, you haven't been born again. But at the end of the day, when that, uh, when that mind is perfected, because you got to overcome. Like the Lord said seven times in Revelation, 
who shall overcome shall inherit all things, who shall overcome shall sit on my throne, who shall overcome, I grant him uh, no name, and it go on and on. Overcome what? Your flesh, the world, and your arch enemy, the devil, because he's out to destroy you. And what the Lord told Peter, upon this rock I will build my church, talking about himself, and the gates of hell shall not prevail, prevail against it. And he also said, I give you the keys of the kingdom of God. Whatever it takes to get into the kingdom, Peter had it. And he gave him authority also. What you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and what you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. In other words, the Lord gave you the, the power of attorney to work on his behalf. But, brothers and sisters, we have not yet understood that. But, uh, We will one day, will, and I hope this lesson help you to uh, achieve that. So, um, let's go to um, Genesis, Genesis, the second chapter. Genesis 2. And we're going to pick it up at verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Well, the Lord uh, chose uh, the dust of the ground to uh, make man in his image. I guess it was a uh, suitable source for God to duplicate himself. in a lower form until the that time come when he had to change man into that very image of himself in the mind as well as the body. So uh, we see man was made out of the dust of the ground. Uh -huh. And what else? Breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. And man became a living soul. Not that a soul was put in him. He became a living soul. He is the soul. And without the breath of life, the air which you breathe, you would be a dead soul. Keep reading. That's the end of seven. Okay. Uh, oh, six. Uh, pick it up in verse nine. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for the food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And those were two trees that were not literal trees. They were spiritual trees, but they, they were beings. And we're going to see. Uh, skip on down to... Uh, Verse 16. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayst freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. Okay. Man disobeyed. He was deceived by the, by the devil. Eve in particular. Adam wasn't deceived. But he went along with the, with the wife. But turn over to the, uh, the third chapter. Being that I'm focusing on, on, on the Adam, the man, pick it up at verse 17. And to Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Mm -hmm. 
Keep reading. Thorns also and thistles shall I bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken, and from dust thou art, and dust thou shalt return. And so that's the fate of man even today. You live, you come into existence, you live, do whatever you desire to do in this life, and then you die. And in the process of time, you go back to the dust. But let's continue. Let's go on to the sixth chapter. In the process of time, read. Six, and uh, we're going to pick this up at uh, verse five. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Now, that, wait a hold up. Man continued to live, live his life. And man have not yet adopted to the ways of God, even though God's ways were known. Because without the law, there's no knowledge of sin. Without the law, you don't know what sin is. For 1 John, the third chapter, verse 4, tells us, whosoever transgressed the law commits sin. For sin is the transgression of the law. So the wickedness of man, because remember, a man is a free agent. Choose what you want. And that's what you get. And so the wickedness of man is great on the earth. Uh -huh, read. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and um, that every imagination of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. That's almost like it is now. Look at the, the horrifying news that you see every day. In our neighborhoods, and throughout the, uh, the communities of, of man. Wickedness. Continue. Verse 6. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. In another pitiful state, the Lord said, oh, why I made you? And he got to live with it until he just remove you from his presence. God is long suffering, giving you a chance to come into his knowledge, give you a chance to change your ways, and hey, good if you do, and woe if you don't. Continue reading. Verse 8, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Oh, Noah found grace in the, that's unmerited favor. But why? Read. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. So Noah was, uh, was considered perfect in his generations, and he walked with God. Don't you know you could walk with God too today if you would keep his commandments? And be obedient to his word. And separate yourself from the wicked like the Lord has told you, instructed you to do. Like the Lord said, two can't walk together unless they agree. You, hold, you, hold, you, you heard of that old adage, birds of a fly, feather flock together. Hmm. So the time come that Skip on down to verse 13. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. It's some, that's something to think about, ain't it? But guess what? The Lord said that like the days of Noah, so shall be the, his second coming. Let's go there for a moment. Uh, Matthew 24th chapter. And pick it up verse 37. Read when you get there. Matthew 24 and verse 37. But as 
But as the days of Noah were, were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And we're looking for him the second time. Because you know, the apostles want to know what should be that, because Jesus uh, foretold the destruction of Jerusalem in that day. Now we're talking about over 2,000 years ago, brothers and sisters. And they wanted to know uh, when would that be and what would be the sign of your coming and the end of the world. And he went on to name a list of events, like wars, rumors of wars that we see now, earthquakes and divers places, we see that, uh, famines, we see that, the wickedness of man, you know, killing one another, we see that. People being killed for the name of the Lord, we see that. And it's going to escalate until the day where you're going to have a time of trouble such as never was and it shall never be again. And the Lord said, if he didn't cut those days short, there wouldn't be no flesh left alive. We're in those times. And it's escalating. But keep reading. Verse 38. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark uh -huh. and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also be the coming of the Son of Man. There's going to be so much trouble on earth and those who got their eyes on, the Lord going to provide a way where they can escape into the wilderness. Once they're in the wilderness, all hell going to break loose on the earth through the reign of the Antichrist. Or Papa moving out of Rome and set up in Jerusalem, but that's another story for another time. That's going to bring great trouble upon the earth. And during that time, Jesus is going to make his second coming. So, uh, Read that last verse because I don't want nobody to want to think that I'm escaping the so-called rapture. Read. Then shall two be in the field, and the one shall be taken, the other one left. That's at the second coming of Jesus when the dead and Christ shall rise first, and we that are alive are going to be changed to meet the Lord in the cloud and in the air. We're going to come on down with the Lord to do battle and take the earth. And the, and, and the ones that was left behind, if you see yourself standing and in that day had resisted, received the mark of the beast, there's still some hope for you if you hadn't then make the change. Just don't, uh, when the Lord start purging the earth with that sword that come out of his mouth, just hope that you escape that. But anyway, let's go further. Let's go to... Uh, Psalms, the 14th chapter. Oh, not that Psalms, but uh, let's go to uh, 2 Timothy, the 4th chapter, because show you how wicked it is, bring you on down to where we're at now. Uh, 2 Timothy, the 3rd chapter. Because <clears throat> the Lord said, like the days of Noah. But just show you how... The, <laughs> And it was very corrupt in Noah's time. Let's show you how it is in our time. And it's going to get even worse. Like I said, I wouldn't be surprised. You see how the, uh, you know, the sisters wearing these, what they call leggings, almost like they naked. Maybe before the trip uh, start in, in days of great trouble, maybe them leggings going to come off. Boy. I mean, it's terrible. Sisters. The Lord says, separate yourself. Don't be like the world. And he prayed for the brothers and the sisters that even though they in the world, the Lord protect them from the evil of the world. And John said, that them that love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. Okay, read that 2 Timothy uh, the third chapter. And we're going to pick this up at uh, verse 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. And we end those days. And perilous times. Read. 
For men shall be lovers of their own selves. That's how they are very selfish. They care about me, me, me. This is a me generation. I, I, I. That's the that's I generation. My, my, my. That's the my generation. We in it. Read. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, mm -hmm. traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than the lovers of God. Oh, let's have a good time. Party up. Let's go for it. Let's live large. Uh-huh. Read. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Oh, this sounds like church people. In particular, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. You know why? Because power comes with godly living. And people don't believe in the power of God these days. But, hey, the Lord, through you, brothers and sisters, can still do miracles. Through you, still can raise the dead. Through you, to do many wonderful works, heal the sick. But people don't, in the churches, don't believe that God still do that, could do that. It's according to your faith, brothers and sisters. When the Son of Man, like Jesus said, makes the second coming, will he find faith on the earth? I hope to be one of those faithful ones that he find. What about you? Let's go over to, uh, so that's the state of mind the people in today, in these last days. You can't trust nobody these days. Not even your own wife. <laughs> Husband too. That's why the, hey, the Lord said, hey, the day is coming that hey, them that married be as though they not married. And I know some of y'all be in trouble now. Hey, don't let the right hand know what your left hand do. Or don't, don't let the left hand know what your right hand do. Those people that are supposed to be close to you. Something you just got to keep to yourself. So Psalms 14 chapter. Psalms 14. And we're going to pick this up at uh, uh, verse 1. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. I didn't say, I, I, I didn't say that now. I wasn't pointing to you. The Lord looking to the minds of men. And you know who you are. Read. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that does good. Uh -huh. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. Uh -huh. They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. What? There is none that does good. There is no, none not one. that does good now. One. It sound like we reading out of the New Testament, don't it? Read. That's the end of three. Okay. Let's turn over to uh, Isaiah 59. Isaiah 59, and pick it up with verse 1. Behold. The, hey, talking about the state of man, man's mind state, his behavior. None good, not one. He said, all have become what? Filthy. Behold, Read. the Lord's hands is not shortened that it cannot save, neither is ear heavy that it cannot hear. Wait a minute, you know what? You, you, why the Lord don't answer my prayer? Maybe you better examine yourself. Read. 
but your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Hey, Lord can hear now. But our sins separate us from my God. Our iniquities. That's why we, sometimes we had to give a, a, a soul search, kind of call it a wicked search, <laughs> where we in line with God or we done out of line. Continue reading. Verse 3, and your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue hath muttered perverseness. None calleth for justice, nor any pleaded for truth. Uh -huh. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. They hatch a cockatrice eggs and weave the spider's web. He that eateth of their eggs dieth, and that which is cooked that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper. Mm. Skip on down to verse 15. Yea, truth faileth. He that departed from evil maketh himself a prey. That's how it is in this, in this generation. When you want to stop doing evil, when you want to follow God and his ways and the commandments, you looked upon by the wicked as some a prey prey on. You consider weak. Okay. But uh, serving the guy got some form that they think you weak. Hey. Like the true power lies in obedience and follow after God's ways and uh, growing in, in his attributes called the fruits of the spirit. That's where the power lies. And people that get, get a misunderstanding about who you are can fall into some, to some great trouble. God, Lord said, protect yourself. You know, you have a right to protect yourself when uh, people come against you to want to do you will for harm. But anyway, uh, keep reading. Middle of 15. And the Lord saw it. And it displeased him that there was no judgment. Uh huh. Okay, it pleased him because it, it was no judgment. Skip on down. Let's go to uh, that's that's part of the state of the world, and that's how the Lord look upon us. Let's go to Romans third chapter. See if anything changed. Hey, and we in the new, uh, under the life of the new covenant. Where the Lord put his laws in your inward part and have written them in your mind. Romans 3, let's pick this up, verse 10. Okay, read. As it is written. There is none righteous, no, not one. Hey, you know, he's quoting uh, what's written in the Holy Scriptures. Psalms and, uh, and the prophet Isaiah. Read. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. Sound like we read this before, right? <laughs> Keep reading. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. Uh -huh. There is none that does good. No, not one. No, not one. Read. Go to 19. Uh, yes. Verse 19. Now we know that what things whatsoever the law said, it says to them who are under the law, uh -huh. that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Don't you know that uh, the, the Israel of God, even in that day and even in this day, are the lawgivers, they uphold God's law. They supposed to be a light into the world. The Lord said he showed his law to Jacob and his statutes to Israel. He haven't did so with any other nation. You see, read that in Psalms 147. Guess what? So even though the world was ignorant of the law of God, Israel is his witnesses that you still supposed to be keeping the commandments of God. So if Israel broke them, 
the world don't have a chance. They guilty too, because they never was following them as a whole. So now, keep reading. Verse 20, therefore by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. And so, brothers and sisters, if you want to be uh, considered righteous on your own merit, it ain't going to work. If you wanted to be righteous on your own merit, you had to be back 2,000 years ago before the Messiah was brought on the scene. And so when he came on the scene, all the world was guilty. And so it's only through the righteousness of Jesus the Christ can you be uh, justified before the Lord. Because God requires blood for the transgressions of sin. Not any kind of blood. The Bible tells us the blood of animals could never take away sin. So we need to come on another type of blood. The blood of God. The Bible says that we were purchased by the blood of Jesus the Christ. And by the blood of Jesus the Christ, he paid atonement for our lives to get us back in right standing with God. And so that's the uh, beginning of our recovery back to God and uh, learning his ways and walking in his commandments and developing in his character. So keep, uh, pick it up at verse 21. Uh, 21. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Uh -huh. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. See, there's a righteousness that come to you by faith in the Son of God that exceeds the faith of the royal law. But you got to keep the royal law as a duty because it determines it's like a tax on your faith. Like you was given a you was given a house by inheritance. You didn't pay for it. And all you had to do, just keep it up and pay the taxes yearly. Now, what, what happens if you don't pay the taxes on that house that you got for free? Huh? It'd take it from you, right? So likewise with your salvation, brothers and sisters. Lord have given you eternal life as a gift through his son. But if you don't do what God say and be obedient, he's going to take your salvation from you. Who do you think all those people is that's outside the city? Some of them were believers, but they chose not to be obedient to God, not to serve God. And so what happened? The Lord got the lake of fire waiting on them. So the same can happen to us, brothers and sisters, if we don't uh, do God's commandments because it is our duty to do. Now, uh, verse 26. Verse 26, read. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. See, uh, the righteousness that God looks at is the righteousness of his son that was imputed unto you. Because you believed. Now, now what about the uh, regular uh, law? Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Mm -hmm. Keep reading. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Now you have, you know, you have uh, two sets of laws. You got laws that, that was done away with the, the animal sacrifices, which is also... Uh, uh, 
was the standard by which men had lived back in that day. Because they, even though Jesus died, they continued uh, for our sins. They continued animal sacrifices until Rome uh, destroyed the city in 70 AD. But this law is talking about the law of the commandments. And uh, we still pose to keep them. Verse 30, or uh, verse 29. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Mm -hmm. Yes, of the Gentiles also. Uh-huh, read. Seeing it is one God, which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. Uh-huh. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. Now, this is the royal law he's talking about. You can't do it with the royal law because you're, you're living in faith through Jesus Christ. You establish it and make it known. That's why Jesus said in the book of Revelation, last book in the Bible, last chapter, this are them that do the commandments that they may enter into the city because it leads to eternal life. So we, what we do, we establish the law. Make it known. Let's kick over to uh, the chapter 5. Because this is, we're on our recovery, to, brothers and sisters, to be just like God. Our behavior got to change. Pick it up in verse 5. Uh, chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God throughout uh -huh. our Lord Jesus Christ, uh -huh. by whom also we have access by faith into his grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And that's how we uh, uh, begin to renew our life through our faith and uh, begin to uh, be a separation in the world of the wicked through Jesus Christ. Now skip on down to uh, verse 8. But God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Uh -huh. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Uh -huh. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. That's right. And not, on, not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Reconciliation. We're back in, in uh, harmony with God through the atonement of Jesus the Christ. Now skip on down to verse 17. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which received abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in the life by one Jesus Christ. Through receiving the gift of righteousness, through Jesus Christ, you can, you can pick yourself up and begin to rule in life. Rule over your affairs, brothers and sisters. Rule in your surroundings. God said, submit your ways unto the Lord, and he shall bring it to pass if you're righteous. So you begin to rule in your life. Because you begin to uh, be obedient to God's word, be, be faithful, and uh, be, uh, begin to you start doing things that please him. Read verse 18. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one that the free gift came upon all men, all men unto justification of life. Uh -huh. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Just like uh, Adam's disobedience, many became sinners. So by the righteousness of Jesus the Christ, many became righteous through his obedience. So that's where we stand now, brothers and sisters. You hey, all chances for you to be right on your own merit, be righteous on your own merit, is over. You're just doing what, you're, what is your duty to do. Your true righteousness comes through your faith in your Lord and maker, Jesus the Christ, called the Messiah, the anointed one of God. So now, you're on your way 
and to developing with empower to be just like God. Let's turn over quickly to 2 you Corinthians. Uh, you can read that 21, I'm sorry. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Hey, stick with it, brothers and sisters. It'll take you all the way to the end. That's why Jesus said, them that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. And doing what? Righteousness of Jesus the Christ, the anointed one of God. Now let's turn over to uh, 2 Corinthians 6 chapter. 2 Corinthians 6 chapter. And we're going to pick this up at verse uh, 16. Okay, read. And what agreement have the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Hey, wait a minute now. Do you believe you the temple of the living God? God says you is. What makes you so different? Because you got the holy law in your body, in your mind, brothers and sisters. In, in uh, Romans, the seventh chapter, you can pick it up at 12. The law is holy. The commandments is holy, just, and good. They're holy and righteous all by themselves. You can't add nothing to it. You can't take nothing away from it. And so, therefore, you're going to try to get around Jesus. You have a form of righteousness. But because... You're seeking at your own righteousness. It ain't going to do you no good. It, it, you have the appearance of righteousness. Because the law, law of God is holy and righteous all by themselves. But listen to what Paul said. But anyway, he said, last verse in chapter, Romans 7, chapter, he said, With the, in my mind I do serve the law of God. But in my flesh, the law of sin. You know what the law of sin is? Disobedience. Breaking the commandments. And that brings death. Prematurely or at the end of the day, in the judgment. Eternal damnation. Lake of fire. But uh, keep reading, verse 17. Wherefore, come out from among them, be ye separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. So the Lord said, come on out from among them, be ye separate. Read. And will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. So that, that, this is how you begin to walk with God. Come out and be separate. Keep God's commandments and uh, and. Be strong in faith in Jesus Christ because he is your righteousness. Read right into the seventh chapter and pick it up at verse one. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. So we're on our way now, brothers and sisters, of being what God wants us to be. Now let's find out what this flesh is filthiness of the flesh is. Turn over to Galatians, the uh, fifth chapter. Galatians, the five. Now we're going to pick it up in verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Now wait a minute now. This is how you know. Now, we're all flesh beings. We're all made from the dust of the earth. But in your mind, you don't have to live after the flesh. You know what your body dictates to you? See, the God's law is spiritual. They came from heaven. 
Walking in the flesh means that you develop in ways that come from out of your imagination or some, what some man told you. So let's find out the, work, the results. Read. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery. Hey, that's the top of the list. Taking another man's wife. Read. Fornication. Uh-huh. Uncleanness. Lasciviousness. Idolatry. Witchcraft. Hatred. Variance. Immolations. Wrath. Strife. Seditions. Heresies. Envies. <laughs> murder. Murders. Drunkenness. Revelings. And such like of the which I tell you before, as I've also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. In other words, if you're a practitioner, this is your lifestyle. This is what you practice. Not that you're going to ha have made a mistake coming you know, down the line as you was uh, growing in life. But these are, are people that, this is their lifestyle. Is this your lifestyle? This is what you practice. This is how you practice your day-to-day -day life. In these attributes. Now, what you need to do a homework assignment, get your big good dictionary and look up all these attributes. Broaden up your understanding. Now, if you want to know if you're in the spirit, skip down to verse 22. But the fruit of the spirit. Hold it. The fruit of the spirit is just another phase for the spirit of God. The attributes of God. The mind of God. Read. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Uh-huh. So this is, this is embedded in you. This has developed in you. This is ingrained in you. This is your lifestyle. You follow me? This is your lifestyle. And you know what? God has given us some of these attributes even before we came into the uh, fullness of his knowledge. Why? Because he promised you that he would pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And you having some of these attributes is a deposit on your salvation. Like it's a down payment on your salvation until the day that he uh, actually save you at the end of the day. But you got to develop in the other attributes. Having knowledge is not enough. Well, it's, knowledge is the basis of all things. But you guess what? You, you got to have love. You know, you grow in knowledge. Don't you know that the false prophets, they done taken away the key of knowledge? They don't tell you these things in the churches. Why? Because they are they are kingdom blockers. They standing at the door. They don't want you to come into the, uh, the kingdom of God at the end of the day. So they blocking it away by not teaching you everything that God wants you to know. Yes. Jesus said, I didn't hold nothing back. I told you everything that you need to know. Now, why do they want to hold back on teaching you everything that you need to know? But anyway... <clears throat> Uh, <clears throat> verse 24. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections, with the affections and the lust. Hey, <clears throat> you know how you crucify the flesh? Oftentimes, every, every uh, a day of atonement, that's a, a type of crucifying the flesh. You deny yourself to be a, the, a you deny to be a fornicator. You deny to be an adulterer. You are denying yourself to be a thief. You deny yourself to be a liar. That's how you crucify your flesh. You refuse to do the things that's contrary to God's law. And it begins with your baptism. When you went un under that water, you took part of the death and crucifying of the Lord. But uh, read that uh, verse 26. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. 
Let us not be desires of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Uh-huh. So because you're crucifying, you're supposed to be crucifying that old you, putting to death that old you. So uh, that brings us into what Jesus, uh, <clears throat> when John the Baptist came on the scene 2,000 years ago, he was trying to get our attention. Let's go to Matthew, the third chapter. Matthew, the third chapter. Sometimes you got to bring your things back into your remembrance because 2,000 years, man has not yet as a whole changed his behavior and how he uh, come forward to serve the Lord and uh, be a true brother and, and a true sister to one another. Matthew 3, pick it up verse 1. And in those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Oh, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. That's the heaven uh, that come down. <clears throat> like our Lord tell you in Revelation uh, uh, 21, he saw new Jerusalem coming down from heaven. Like a bride. Coming to the, to the groom. To the groom. But anyway, uh, keep reading. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare you the way of the Lord. Uh, make his path straight. Make his path straight. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Uh, hold on for a minute. Make his path straight. Skip down to verse 8. Bring forth therefore fruits, meet for repentance. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our fathers. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up the children unto Abraham. Well, so in uh, other words, show the evidence that you have changed your life. That you're trying to do better, trying to serve God. That's all we call the fruits. But notice this, verse 10. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Wait a minute now. The axe is laid to the root of the trees. Don't you know that the Lord in, uh, symbolically called men trees? And when, at the end of the day, when you have done what God has said you're supposed to do, guess what you're going to be called? Trees of righteousness, the plan of the Lord that he may be glorified. But you know what? Trees of righteousness are supposed to bear a uh, certain kind of fruit. Read. Therefore, every tree which bringeth forth not bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wait a minute now. He's not talking about people in this case. No, uh, people. You know, you win souls. That's called the fruit of your labor. But this is an inward fruit. This is getting personal. If you don't bring forth good fruit, what the Lord said, you are cut down and cast into the fire. That was John the Baptist, the forerunner of the Lord. Let's go see what the Lord said. Let's go over to uh, Matthew, the seventh chapter. Seven. Yeah, Matthew, the seventh. Because he said, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. So uh, in his ministry of telling you, repent, for the kingdom of God is is at hand. Let's see what he said in Matthew, the seventh chapter. Pick this up at uh, verse uh, 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Uh -huh. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Because he's that straight, he's that door. Straight gate. You got to come through him, through your faith. And through him, you gain the power to serve God righteously. That's why broad is the way that lead it to destruction, and narrow is the way that lead it to eternal life. And how many find it? Few. 
Now, so you notice. I lost a place for. <coughs> excuse me. So, therefore, uh, skip down to verse 17. Even so, every good tree bringing forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringing forth evil fruit. They're talking about your, your personality and character, brothers and sisters. The Lord's coming right home with it. You better take heed. Read. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Uh -huh. Every tree that bringeth, bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. So the Lord wants you to be developing in his likeness that really is of his kind. Read. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. By their fruits ye shall know them. Like how, know, how you know you're coming among a false prophet? All you have to do is just ask him questions. He appeared to be godly, but like the scriptures say, inwardly he had raven wolf. You keep asking him questions, and he come up with the wrong answers. That wolf going to come out of him. <laughs> what are you getting angry for? The Lord said, hey, you don't supposed to be angry. I'm just asking you a simple question. Ah, uh, you know, you don't supposed to be Questioning the pastor. Wait, wait a minute now. You, you're a man. You're not God. Right. You know, you, how am I going to learn if you don't answer my questions? And how am I going to be able to identify if you're a true servant of God or a perpetrator? Mm. Like Lord said, don't cast your pearls before swines. Hey, if you keep doing it, they're going to turn and try to do you some hurt. But anyway, brothers and sisters, keep reading. 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Oh, that talk is not going to do you no good. Read. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. But them that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven, just like he said in other places. Not to hear the word are just before God, but the doers of the word shall be justified. <coughs> Read. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Oh, the prophecies. Oh, you know, Israel, God do a lot of prophesizing, don't they? In their teachings. We are basically a prophetic ministry. Mm -hmm. Interesting, ain't it? Read. And in thy name have cast out devils. Oh, and the holiness churches are always talking about that. They gave the devil a black eye last night. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, kick them head first out of the room. But you know what, they they uh, they uh, casting out devils, uh-huh. What about, read on. And in thy name done many wonderful works. All the other religions, all, hey, we feeding the poor, we uh, clothing the, uh, the naked, we finding housing for the poor. Hey, they doing many for wonderful works. Many, many wonderful works. I cover all of them. But what are you going to say? 23. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you work, ye that work iniquity. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Otherwise, I never knew you. Hmm. You mean I've been doing all these good works and you never knew me? <coughs> hey, you wouldn't keep my commandments. You wouldn't serve me, uh, my son, in faith. You always want to claim your righteousness, always glorifying yourself, but ne never gave the glory to the, the Father and the Son. We're not going to stop there. Let's turn over to Ezekiel, the uh, matter of fact, Matthew 5, pick it up at verse 13. Ye are the salt of the earth. Hey, we're on our way to becoming just like God wants us to be. Read. But if the salt have lost its savor, wherefore shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing. In other words, brothers and sisters, you know, the, uh, you're supposed to be a difference maker. Salt is supposed to have flavor. You're supposed to be a difference. But if your, 
And that, that salt, it represents the spirit of the Lord. If, and, and, and the talents and gifts that he has given you, and you're not making it a difference, you don't lost your favor, flavor. Read. But to be cast out and to be trodden underfoot of men. Uh huh. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Uh -huh. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and to give light unto all that are in the house. Uh -huh. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Have you ever thought about, hey, the gifts and the talents that the Lord has given you? Is the light that he wants you to shine into the world? He said, let your light so shine that men may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. You're not out there soapboxing, want to be seen of men. you out there to give glory to the Father and the Son Amen. by those gifts, those talents that God has given you to uh, win souls for the kingdom of God. But let's move on. 17. Uh, we could, we could uh, bypass that. Okay. Let's go right on into uh, uh, Ezekiel, the 18th chapter. Because it's something that we got to do. It's something that we got to do, brothers and sisters. We got work to do on ourselves. Oftentimes, we're just waiting on the Lord to do everything for us. No, he wants you to work in the goodness and in righteousness on yourself, on ourselves. How can you uh, help another brother when you got a big old plank in your eye and you're trying to uh, uh, remove a small thing out of your brother's eye? Hey, first get that beam out of your own eye, then you better see clearly to uh, remove the, uh, the blot in your brother's eye as we uh, you know, uh, move forward to saving souls for the kingdom of God. Ezekiel, the 18th chapter. And we're going to pick this up at uh, verse uh, 30. Ezekiel 18 and 30. Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, says the Lord God. Uh -huh. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be, in, be your ruin. So the Lord is zeroing in on the house of Israel. That's us, so-called Negro, color folk, Afro-American, and whatever name we call in whatever country we find ourselves in. We Israel. So we got to make, hey, you know, we got a real hard problem. That's the mind. We won't listen to God. We always got to do it our way. We talk too much. <laughs> Keep reading. 31. Cast away from you all your transgressions whereby ye have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. But why will ye die, O house of Israel? When God said, we got we to gotta make ourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Like Paul said, God uh, is able to not only uh, uh, give you the will, but also give you the power to do his will. If you hink, linked up with Jesus, the, one, the author and finisher of your faith, you can make you a new heart. Lord, give you all the tools you need to make you a, a new man. Read. For I have no pleasure in the death of him that died, says the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live ye. I'm going to turn from our wickedness that live. You see how it's been wicked down through the generations now? We, we almost, uh, it's almost like the days of Noah right now. The wickedness of man is great in the earth. And every imagination that, that you think of is evil continually. Are you one of them? Remember, we are under the new covenant where the Lord put his law in our inward part and write it in our mind. He don't wait until we do the physical act anymore. When you start thinking evil, I mean, really thinking evil to do evil, the Lord will deal with you. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus the Christ. Now, you want to die before your time? Keep thinking evil. And uh, 
think you're going to, nobody see you. God see you right into your mind. We under the new covenant where the Lord said the days was, used to be when he said, whosoever commit uh, lust at the woman, whosoever commit adultery, brother, you was in jeopardy of being stoned to death. But I say unto you, whosoever lust at the woman in his heart committed adultery already. <coughs> so that means you transgress the law. God is going to deal with you, right? If you don't repent, he'll deal you with you right on the spot. Same with the uh, thief and the robber and the murderer. He said, it used to be said that uh, thou should not kill. He said, but I say unto you, whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause is in jeopardy of uh, the judgment. And who's, because it provokes. Anger provokes. And he said, whosoever call a brother fool shall be in danger of hell fire. Because calling somebody a fool, that's provocation. What? What you say? Now nah, it's on now. You call me a fool? Come on. Let's get it on now. And you ain't going to wait to say get it on. You got, there go a, a fist flying and you ducking. <laughs> or maybe you got blindsided. You shouldn't have turned your back. Call me a fool and going to walk away. <laughs> okay. Tap on the shoulder. Pow. You turn around. But that's breaking the law. Calling a brother a fool. Or being angry with your brother without a cause. You transgressing the law. Unless there's another, another woman. And you got a wife. Or if you don't have a wife. You commit a fornication. In your mind. That's why the Lord said, make yourself a new heart, a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? The Lord said, you don't have no pleasure in anybody dying. So turn yourselves and live. Let's see how you do that. Turn over Acts, the second chapter. Acts, the second chapter. Acts, the second chapter. Guess what? Israel found out that Jesus the Messiah was not only the Messiah or the anointed one of God. He was Lord to God, manifested in flesh. You mean we killed God that go into the flesh? You mean we killed the Messiah and we are crucifying all over again through our behavior? We're with you and how we be thinking. Pick it up in verse 36, 2 and 36. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God had made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Both Lord, he got two positions. He's God. And he's the anointed one. That's what Christ means, the Messiah. The anointed one. He's both of them. And we killed him? Read. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and, un and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? So when they was pricked in their heart, they was real sorrowful. I mean, they, they was hurt. They wanted to change. What shall we do? Men and brethren, what shall we do? What did Peter say? 38. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Have you received the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit since you believed? No, it's coming in many forms now. It's coming through the Word, flowing right through the Word of God. The Lord don't have to deal dramatically, which He can, like He did back in the day. You do it low key. You come in every Sabbath to get the Word of God, the Lord is raining down His Spirit on you. And you you grow up with understanding, knowledge, and with wisdom. He's pouring this Holy Spirit on you. You see yourself growing. You see your, you see yourself not the same like you was last year at the same date. You growing in the Spirit. Mm -hmm. 
And so, uh, if you want it more dramatic, just ask the Lord. He'll give it to you. That's the truth. But anyway, uh, I just wanted to uh, show you that. Now, <clears throat> the Lord gave a parable of how his spirit be working. Let's turn over to Luke, the 8th chapter. Because you're on your way of walking in the newness of life with power, brothers and sisters, to be able to overcome your flesh, the world, and the devil. Because you got to overcome and start growing the attributes of God in your mind and in your behavior. Luke, the 8th chapter. Because it's very important. It's vital to your life that now is and the world to come. Eternal life or eternal life. <clears throat> it sustains you now. If you continue and don't faint. And um, Let's pick this up at verse 5. I'm going up a little higher. Give me a little background. Come on, read. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. And some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. Mm -hmm. And some fell up among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it, and choked it. Uh -huh. And other fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruits and a hundredfold. Uh -huh. And when he had said these things, he said, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. You got ears to hear? Let him hear. Now he's going to get ready to break this parable down. Skip down, uh, read verse 10. And he said unto, he said unto, and he said, Matter of fact, uh, nah. read that nine. And his disciples asked him, saying, what might this parable be? Now, remember now, the disciples often sat with Jesus privately asking him questions. You need to deal with a private conversation. Well, because the Lord said he, he spoke to the masses in parables, but behind the scenes, he's, he, he talked to the uh, apostles plainly. He right. broke them down. Right. Read. Now, he's breaking this down. Read. Verse 10. And he said, unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But to others in parables. All the way, oh, now, you listening to a conversation that Jesus was con conclusively speaking to the disciples. It's to you to understand the, the mysteries of the kingdom of God. So it's, uh, he was talking to the, uh, the apostles. Now he's talking to you. But to others in parables. Why? Read. That seeing they may not see and hearing they may not understand. Uh huh. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. The seed is the word of God. <clears throat> Don't you know the word of God is spirit and, in, and is life? Another form of the Holy Spirit. Read. Those by the wayside are they that hear, then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. That's, they represent the wayside. That could be your husband. That could be your wife. That could be your sons and daughters, friends, relatives, teachers, bosses. I'm going to take that worry right out of your heart. Because, you, hey, you just got it. You're happy. Read. 13. They on the rock are they that which, when they hear, receive the word with joy, and these have no root, which for a while believe, and in time of temptations, fall away. Wait a minute now. You're joying for the word of God when you first receive it. Now, after a while, hey, you, somebody come up to you. You believe in that Bible? Man, don't you know a white man wrote that Bible? Don't you know you being brainwashed? And because you don't have no root. You, you succumb to it. 
or your parents may say, oh, you, you done joined some cult. Get out of, the, out, of, out, out of my face with that garbage. No, you come back here next week talking that same stuff. I'm putting you out. Okay. They represent those who are on the rocks. They didn't have no what? Uh, no root. They, didn't, they weren't long in it long enough to get rooted. But read. 14. And, and that which fell upon thorns are they which when they have heard go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasure of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. Ah, oh, no fruit into perfection. Oh, you got zeal. You got love. Oh, you serve the Lord. But hey, the pleasures of life, the sickness of riches. They choking the word right out of you. you. You know, you're not giving no time for Bible study. You're not, you, you're not giving no time to share the word with others. You're not giving no time to practice on what you preach. You got little nubs supposed to be fruit. Oh, you got a form of godliness. Guess what? They're not growing in to perfection. They're not developing. You ever heard of being stunt in growth? You have you seen fruit on trees that haven't fully devoted? Do you eat them fruit? You think God care about you being undeveloped when he gave you potential to be just like him in the fullness? Verse 15. But that on the good ground are they which is an honest and good heart. They that which is in an honest and good heart Having heard the word, keep it. Bring forth fruit with patience. Hey, see that patience is not a fruit of the spirit. But they bring forth other fruit with that patience. They represent the good ground. You're not going to be changing drastically overnight. Hey, some hey, do a great amount of change in one sitting when they hear the word of God. Others, a little more time. God has patience. He had a good and honest heart. With patience, brought forth more fruit. So that's the one that represented bringing forth a hundredfold. So, the, hey, the Spirit of God is working in you, brothers and sisters. It's working on you to bring forth attributes just like him, just like his kind. Let's go to uh, St. John 15 chapter. Because you got to understand how it's done, brothers and sisters. Like the Lord said, you got to work on it. Make yourself a new heart and a new spirit. You say you love the Lord. Well, you got to show it by doing what he say and standing on it on, in your faith. Pick it up at verse 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Wait a minute now. You say you're supposed to be you hooked up with the Lord? And he don't see no fruit? Fruit of what? His likeness. Fruit of his kind. He said, he'd take it away. Keep reading. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Oh, <clears throat> hey, you're going through a fire now. Purging, it, it, you know, look at, it's, just think about, you got a, a, a tree that's overhanging with branches and leaves. I, I got to prune that tree. I feel, how do you think that tree feel when you start cutting up <laughs> a branch off? You don't know because you're not a tree. <laughs> but guess what? When the Lord started dealing with you in the area where you lacking, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not joyful. You're an impatient person. The Lord put you in a situation that you got to be very patient. Especially with the ones in your household. 
that rebellious daughter and that rebellious son that don't want to do nothing that you say. How many times you want to put them out the house? But you're quick-tempered. And you have uh, no patience. But you love that child. You should be saying, Lord, give me patience. And before you know it, you've been grown in some patience. And before you know it, hey, your temper is not as quick as it used to be. Well, because the Lord said, be slow to anger. Slow to wrath. So you start growing in them attributes. Whatever you lacking, the Lord going to put you in the fire. Don't you know that he said, Israel, I chose you in the furnace of affliction? That's not just talking about the great tribulation. That's talking about the affliction in everyday life. On your job, you stuck with a person that you have personality issues. And whatever it is, you had to uh, be long suffering. And maybe you got to uh, be slow to speak. So those are ways, uh, examples of how the Lord developed your, your, your mind by putting you in, in uh, areas in your life that you're lacking in his character so you could develop in his mind. Just hold it right, hold it right here for a minute. Turn quickly to uh, First Peter, first chapter. I warned you, I, I, I didn't tell you I don't go by the script all the time. I just veer away, but I come back. Let's pick this up at the Uh, verse 6, Peter, 1 Peter, 1 chapter, verse 6 and 7, read. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. In other words, you're going through a lot of trials, you're heavy, you know, but read. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perishes, Though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. See, your, your faith is going through the fire, brothers and sisters. It's not going to be easy for you all the time. Lord give you some slack, but the Lord will check on you and find out how you're growing in it and its likeness. And he'll put you through a trial where you're lacking that you can develop that fruit that bring you into perfection. Called the, the the fiery trial of your faith. Now back to uh, the fifteenth chapter. Uh, pick it up, verse three. Fifteen and three. John fifteen. Yeah, Saint John fifteen and three. Okay. Now ye are clean. Through the word which I have spoken unto you. Mm -hmm. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. How do you abide in him? Trust it in him. Following his word. Keeping his commandments. Recognize him as being the Lord of your life. Pick it up in verse 6. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and as is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. And you're not talking about the fire of life. He's talking about the fire of the lake of fire. The man is parable for the angels. You done, you done developing in the uh, God kind. He don't have no use for you. Verse 7. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Uh-huh. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, 
so you shall be my disciples. That's how the Father is glorified. That you bear much fruit, you grow, you uh, you develop much in His likeness and, and 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 of His kind. It's called the fruits of the Spirit, and the Father is glorified. Jesus is glorified. You edified and built up. Okay. Let's go to Luke the 13th chapter. Luke the uh, 13th. Because the question was, you know, do it take forever developing these fruits? Like, you know, the Lord got a timetable? That, that he want to see you developing? Some of us have been in here 50 years, but the Lord is long suffering. They don't have they haven't developed no fruit. You want to see some fruit. I mean, not how many people you win into the gospel, but the fruit of his likeness in you. Okay. Luke, the 13th chapter. And we're going to pick this up at, because uh, it's very important. We're going to pick this up at uh, verse 6. Luke 13 and 6. This is another parable. He spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and saw fruit thereon and found none. Wait a minute. A certain man planted a fig tree in his garden. And uh, he came out to look for fruit, and it had none. Okay, read. Seven. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why cumbered it to the ground in the ground? Didn't didn't uh, John, uh, John the Baptist say that uh, every tree that bears not good fruit is gonna be cut down and cast into the fire? Then Jesus said, hey, you shall know the tree by its fruits. And if you don't bring forth no good fruit, you're going to cut it down and cast it into the fire. He, then did Jesus say, either make the tree good or the, and its fruit good or make the tree evil and its fruit evil. Talking about your mindset, your mental development, brothers and sisters. Read. Eight. And he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also till I shall dig about it and dung it. Uh-huh. And if it, be, if it bear fruit, well, and if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down. Otherwise, the Lord got a timetable. You want to see some, some progress in your life. The Father's the one that planted it. Jesus is interceding on your behalf. Let me work with the Father. Let me dug it, you know, trim it, do whatever I need to... Uh, See that it start developing fruit? If it do so, good. If it don't, what? Cut it down. Let's go over to Romans 6 chapter. As we wind down. Romans 6. And pick it up verse 1. Okay, read. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. In other words, you, you come under this great grace that the Lord has given you through Jesus Christ. Shall you continue in sin, doing your own thing, breaking God's law? He said, God forbid. Read. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein. Now you're supposed to be dead, you know, spiritually to the wickedness of, of the world. But how are you going to continue living in sin, breaking God's commandments? Read. Three, know ye not 
that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. When you was baptized into Jesus Christ, you was baptized into his death. <laughs> Do you understand what you're saying? Believe that? Read. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so though we also should walk in newness of life. So when Jesus rose from the dead to the glory of the Father, guess what he said? All power is given to me in heaven and in earth. So likewise, when you come up out of that water, you're supposed to be walking in the newness of life through Jesus the Christ. And all things are possible for you. You ste you're stepping in another realm of, of living, another elevation, another level where all things is possible for you. Read. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. At the end of the day, we got the hope of the resurrection. That's, that's, that's tomorrow. But what now? You're supposed to be walking in the newness of life. With power. Just look at how the disciples lived. With power. Keep reading. Six, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. Other way, put to death with him, uh huh. That the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. So you got the victory over sin if you keep God's commandments through Jesus Christ. He gave you the power to walk just like he walked. Didn't John say that? Hey, mm -hmm. he that said he know God and keep God's commandments. It's a liar, and truth is not in him. Therefore, if you believe God, then you ought to, to walk. If you believe in Jesus, you're supposed to walk even like he walked. He walked in all the commandments, tempted in all points like we are, and did not commit one sin. We're supposed to develop that kind of mindset. In Jesus now, not in your own. In Jesus, God, all the glory got to go to God. He wants you while you're young. Now you you all right, old, but he wants you better when you're young. <laughs> Got more energy. <laughs> I know because I was 18 when the Lord drawed me in. So don't let nobody tell you you're too young. They're trying to make you go crazy. No, you're not trying to oh crazy in, in the Lord and doing obedience and walking in faith. You're not going to lose your mind. Oh, you, oh, let me take it back. That old you is going to die. But the new man, through Jesus Christ, is going to come alive. Where was I at, my, my brother? You were in Romans 6. Oh, that's 6, and where we leave off at? What verse? Um, verse 6. Well, uh, skip down to verse 10. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Uh huh. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto, your sin, unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's how you live. You're dead to sin, but you're alive unto God through Jesus the Christ. Because if you, if he's flowing through you, then you're walking just like he's walking. You're talking just like he's talking. Like Jesus said to the disciples, the day is coming that the works that I do shall you do, and greater works. In other words, the same thing that Jesus did, he said, he said that his servant's supposed to do. Laying hands on the sick that they recover. You know, healing, uh, casting out the dead, uh, raising the dead, all those impossible feats. But he said, and greater works. What are those greater works? We're talking about getting the gospel to all the world. That's a greater work. But what about the little things? Like seeing the, uh, the sick 
needing uh, prayer and healing. Call for the elders. And the elders will pray over them, anointing with oil in the name of the Lord. And if they have committed sins, they will be forgiven. And the Lord shall raise them up. Not Pastor X, Y, and Z, or Brother T. Berry and John and Joe. The Lord shall raise them up. The Lord still got supposed to have power in his church through the elders and those who got like, like gifts. Hmm. Something to think about. Let's go over to uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 6 chapter. First Corinthians six chapter. I'm sorry, that's not sec uh that's uh I meant uh second Corinthians fifth chapter. Second Corinthians fifth chapter, I'm sorry. Picking this up, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Wait a minute. You've got to remember, brother and sister, Jesus is not flesh and blood. He's God, a spiritual being. <clears throat> so if you're in him, you begin on to take on the likeness of a spiritual being that would make you a new creature or a new species at the God's kind. The seed has been planted. And at the end of the day, you're going to be just like God. You're going to give up this flesh and blood and be a spiritual being. It's, hey, they call it in the scientific world metamorphosis. Like the worm, caterpillar, butterfly. <laughs> you flesh and blood. At the end of the day, God. But you're going through the change, right? elevation, elevating from flesh to spirit. And it's seen, it's seen in the fruits. How patient were you were before you came into the word of God? How loving were you were before you came into the word of God? How quiet were you were before you came into the word of God? <laughs> See? Hey, you're growing in the spirit. That radio mouth Susie, Susie has become a real quiet kitten. You can't hardly hear her murmur anymore. Okay, verse 16, read that. Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we, know we him no more. Because he's a spirit being now. Read. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Uh -huh. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Uh -huh. And <laughs> all things are of God who have reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and have given to us the ministry of reconciliation. That's what he, hey, God wants you. God wants to forgive you. God love you. Repent and get baptized and come on back to God, Israel. Read. To wit, the God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and have committed to us the word of reconciliation. And he had committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now you're supposed to be wise trying to save some souls, brothers and sisters, for the kingdom of God. Read. Now then, 
We are ambassadors for Christ. We ambassadors for Christ. Read. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be you reconciled to God. Uh -huh. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. That we may be made the righteousness of God in him. So we're growing, brother. We're moving forward, sisters, to come just like God. So be about the work. Represent, represent in your behavior and in the, uh, your conversation. Let's go over to uh, uh, Galatians 2. Galatians 2. Brothers and sisters, this may seem hard, but this is a real simple lesson. And all you have to do is just obey what, what you read and what you learn. And I'll pick this up at verse uh, 20. Galatians 2 and 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I had now live in the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God, mm -hmm. who loved me and gave himself for me. Uh -huh. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Wait a minute now. There's two ways to look at this. Animal sacrifices couldn't help you. Animal sacrifices could never take away sin. And they never can make you justified before God, put you in the right standing. And so therefore... Uh, that's why we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And guess what? The royal law, God's commandments, are holy, just, and good all by themselves. You can't add nothing to it. You can't take it nothing away. Here's the wicked. I say keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. And he started walking in them, but never repented, never changed his lifestyle. But he's appearing to do the commandments. He appeared to be righteous. But... Because he hadn't come through Jesus Christ, through repentance and baptism in Jesus' name for the remission of sins, his righteousness is nothing. And once you do repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus and walk in the commandments of God, hey, he called you when you was nasty and dirty and filthy. So uh, your righteousness is not good enough. So his, his Lord, what the Lord did for you would be all in vain if you want to claim your, your uh, salvation because of your, your righteous works and deeds. Jesus died in vain. But it's through Jesus the Christ, your goodness, your works, and your deeds, your obedience can be justified. You, don't, you can't glory in yourself. You can't boost in yourself. It's all God. It's all about the Father and the Son working out their righteousness in you. Passed from the Father to the Son, given to the Holy Angel, to give it to you. Let's go to uh, Galatians, the third chapter. Uh, we might as well pick this up at the one and read on down. Read. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. That don't mean you're walking around with your head in the cloud. That means you're walking around with the word of God being in your mind. You know, God's business about eternal life and salvation. Read. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. The coming kingdom of God, brothers and sisters. Read. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ. You are God. what? Dead. Dead. Other words, hey, you don't do what the world do, and the world don't do what you do. You hate the world, and the world hates you because you serve God. 
You hate the world because they're doing the opposite. They're not serving the Lord. So you did to the world, and the world is dead to you. Read. For when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. That's the hope of the resurrection. You hope that you become up out of that grave, or you hope that you be changed when he's coming, when you were yet alive. Read. Mortify, therefore, your members, which are upon the earth. Mortify, put to death. Crucify that flesh. Read. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupience, and covetous, which is idolatry. Uh-huh. For which things sake the wrath for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Uh-huh. In thee in, in thee which ye also walked sometime when ye lived in them. Uh, we used to do the same thing. We changing opposingly. Read. But now ye also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communications out of your mouth. And something else we got to do. We got to do it. Didn't he say also put off these? Uh, read. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off all, put off the old man with his deeds. Now lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the what? Old man. With this deed, you put that left that old man in the water when you got baptized. But it's being that it's a process. He's dying daily, that old man, and the new man, which is created at the image and likeness of God, is being renewed day by day. Read ten, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge, after the image of Him that created him. Wait a minute, and put on the new man, which is created in knowledge. After the image of him that created him. In other words, you you growing in the image of God, correct? Yep. Hold this. Let's go to uh, uh, Exodus 34. Uh, Let's look at the image of him that created us. And this was Jesus when he was in his glory as God. I'm not talking about Jehovah, the Father. I'm talking about Jesus, Jehovah. And we're not talking about the Father either. But you're learning something on the way of learning something. This is Jesus when he was in his uh, glorious God. Exodus, the 34. You know, uh, Jesus, uh, Moses wanted to see God. And... Uh, Moses, I'm tired of looking at you through, through the cloud. I want to see you myself. But anyway, the Lord said, hey, I'm going to do you. I know you by name. You're my guy. I'm going to do that thing that you ask. But I want you to know this. No man can see my face and live. But I, there's a part on me that I will allow you to see. And when I pass by, I'm going to cover you with my hand and allow you to see my back parts. But my face cannot be seen. But guess what? He came on down. 34. And we're going to pick it up at verse 5. 34 and 5. Okay. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And proclaimed the name of the Lord. I uh, read. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord. Hold it now. The Lord passed by Moses and proclaimed what? The Lord. Uh huh. The Lord God, merciful. Oh, wait a minute. Lord God, merciful and gracious and gracious, long suffering, long suffering and abundant, abundant in goodness and truth and abundance and goodness and truth. What is truth? The word of God. Merciful, unmerited faith, gracious. And he give you uh favor when you don't deserve it. <clears throat> Long suffering. He put up with you when you don't need to be put up with. But he got some hope, from you, hope in you that you're going to change. You're going to make the adjustment. Long suffering. Goodness and truth. Guess what? 
angel came to Daniel and told him, hey, I've come to show you what's to fall your people in the last days. In the scripture of truth. You read that in the 10th chapter of Daniel, I don't know the exact verse, but it's there. The truth. And Jesus says, sanctify them, Father, through your, your word, for your word is truth. Sanctify them, Father, through your truth, for your word is truth. Set them apart through your truth. The word. Now, let's go back to uh, Colossians, the uh, third chapter. So you found, you've read about five attributes of, of God. Long-suffering, merciful, kind, gracious, goodness, abundant in truth. Guess what? In Psalms, the uh, third chapter, where's well, Proverbs, the third chapter? The Lord talked about himself as being wise. Through wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, he established the heavens, the earth. That's God, wisdom, God, knowledge, God, understanding. Hey, the knowledge of this world, the, the wisdom of this world, the understanding of this world is foolishness with God. He said, through the foolishness of, of preaching, he sent us men speaking his word to save some of us. The wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. You need to get the wisdom of God, which is founded in the word, his words, words of truth. Now, picking it back up at uh, 11, chapter, 11 verse. Uh, read. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian or Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Because it, hey, he's not a man, he's not a female, he's not a Greek, he's not a Jew, according to, in the spirit. The Lord is looking for righteousness. That's what the Lord is looking for, righteousness. All that work of righteousness and do the right thing is accepted with God. Verse 12. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. Wait it a minute. Didn't we read these attributes? How the Lord was boasting of himself, proclaiming his goodness and mercy and long suffering. We got to put this on. You think you just could put on long suffering? You long suffering all of a sudden? You think you put you know, you're a hateful person? You put on love all of a sudden? No, you are going through the fire, brothers and sisters. And Lord going to bring that out of you in truth. You are going to grow. Lord, I called you in the fires of afflict furnace of affliction. You going to grow, or you going to die? Which one are going to be? Verse uh, 13. Forbearing one another, forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. You got to be forgiving. Just like God forgave you, forgive. Now, uh, verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and uh, admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Okay, okay. Now, uh, pick, uh, turn over to Hebrews first chapter as we wind down. Hebrews first chapter. Hebrews 1, and pick it up at verse 1. God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, mm -hmm. hath in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. So we're getting this, this message through his Son. I read. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Jesus being the brightness of his glory. The express 
image, that express image of his person. So whatever the Father is, in every way, Jesus is the same. Read. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Wait a minute. <clears throat> and we ought to be conformed in the very image of Jesus the Christ. You're supposed to look just like him at the end of the day. Uh, but uh, turn over quickly to uh, 2 Corinthians 4th chapter. Second Corinthians, fourth chapter. And let the words of Christ dwell in you richly. You know, richly means abundantly. Okay. We're going to have to come right to the point. Uh, pick this up at uh, verse 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, mm -hmm. in whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Wait a minute. How is it going to shine? Into them. Keep reading. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. So you come, if come and represent Jesus the Christ, guess what? Read. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. Wait a minute. He commanded the light to shine out of darkness. We're supposed to be lights in the, in the world of darkness. Talking about us. Read. Hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Wait a minute. Getting the light of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ? When you're out there preaching that word in seriousness, guess what? They see Jesus, not you. Hey, the glory of God is ready. It's something that's drawn them to the word of God through you. But read. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Oh, it's called a treasure. In, in earthen vessels, vessels made out of dirt. They see the glory of God shining through you when you're preaching that gospel in sincerity and in truth. Glorifying, hey, having the Father and the Son going before you. Hey, they see, they see God through that earthen vessel. Read. That the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. So it's not of yourself. It's of God seeing that power flowing out of you. It's not yourself. But uh, read. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Uh huh. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Hold it right there. Skip on down to verse 16. For which cause we faint not, but, but, though, but though our outward man may perish. Hey, we faint not, we don't get weary because we're doing the thing that God desires us to do. That outward man is perishing, but what? Yet the inward man is renewed day by day. The inward man is renewed day by day. Uh -huh. Read. For our light <coughs> affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight, ex eternal weight of glory. Because at the end of the day, eternal life. That's the that's a, that's a mighty weight of glory. Read. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Hey, your, your glorified body is your eternal life. They're not seen yet. But you can see yourself growing and changing to the point at the end of the day, whether your death or the coming of the Lord, whatever will come first, you're going to be glorified in that body and mind. But as we got about two more scriptures, uh, let's go to... Uh, Romans, the first chapter. Romans, I'm sorry, Romans, the uh, eighth chapter. Romans, the eighth chapter. I said uh, two more scriptures, but we really got three. 
but they're short scriptures. Come on now. Romans 8 and 28. Okay, Romans 8 and 28. Okay, read. And we know that all things work together for, for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. All things work for the good to them that are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he may might be the firstborn among many brethren. Oh yeah, Jesus is going to be the firstborn among many brothers, but he wants us to be, we've been predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son, who is the image of God. Father, express the image. So we're going to be looking like in the mind. But we're all we got, you know, we like dip stars, we got be different in glory. But we're going to have them glorified bodies. Second Peter, first chapter. I told you Peter had the keys of the kingdom. Whatever it, whatever it takes to get in the kingdom, Peter knew what it takes. Let's see what Peter say. Second Peter. First chapter. Uh, we're going to come right to the uh, point. Uh, pick it up at verse 3. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. His, his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. I'm going to read. Through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. To the, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Hey, the Lord calling us through his son to glory and and virtue. Virtue is spiritual excellence. So excellent that it, uh, a woman was uh, humped back, bowed over for 18 years, and, she, and no, nobody could help her. But on the Sabbath day, the Lord said on that particular Sabbath day, he went in there, saw the woman uh, hunched over. He said, uh, be ye healed. And she straightened up. And they got mad at her on the Sabbath. But he, uh, they got mad at Jesus, but he healed that woman. There was another case. One woman had an issue of blood for 12 years. And she said, if I only could touch the hem of his garment. She paid all the money for, for doctors and physicians. They couldn't do nothing for her. But she said, if I could she heard about Jesus, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I know I'd be whole. And guess what? Through the crowd, she got down on her knees and touched the hem of his garment. He said, who touched me? Why you say that? Because virtue flowed out of him and healed her. And there was another case that uh, he prayed all night. And he came down on the mountain. People from all over the region came to hear him speak because they wanted to hear some good word of God, but also to be healed of all their sickness and diseases. And guess what? He couldn't, he couldn't touch all them people, but their faith drew virtue right out of him, and he healed them all. Multitudes even had unclean spirits driven out of them. Devils are on the run because virtue flowed out of him, and Peter tell us, add to your faith virtue. Now, uh, skip down to verse uh, uh, 5. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge. Wait a minute, add to your faith what? Knowledge. Virtue, and to virtue knowledge. Read. And to knowledge, temperance. Temperance, that's uh, self-control. And to temperance, patience. Patience, uh-huh. And to patience, godliness. Uh-huh. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, charity. Uh-huh. For if these things be in you and abound, 
they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, these things being in you, you're going to be a fruitful tree. You're not going to be a barren tree. You're going to be a tree bearing much fruit. Maybe about 19 different kinds of fruit. That's a unique, unique tree of righteousness. But, on the other hand, verse 9. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and have forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wait, are you one of them that have forgotten that you was purged from your old sins and you don't have none of these attributes and you're blind? But read. Wherefore, wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do not do these things, ye shall never fall. So give diligence. I mean, you're up on it. Whatever you have to do, you fast, pray, start to get these attributes to be seen in you. And don't be, don't be uh, afraid of the fire that's going to come into your life because the Lord is trying to get them fruits out of you. But hey, the Lord said, well, hey, much persecution. Hey, uh, all that live godly in this world should suffer persecution. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but he deliver all, of, all out of you're here to deliver you out of all of them. Why? Because he's trying to bring them fruits out of you. Be diligent. Other, you're, you're, about on, on the, you're about getting it. You're being uh, not slothful, but zealous in doing what God wants you to do. And he said, if you do these things, you shall never fall. Even though the Lord said a righteous man could fall seven times, he'll pick them up. Hey, get up and dust yourself off in the righteousness of Jesus the Christ. Keep going. Keep moving, as they say. Verse 11. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So these are keys to get you into the kingdom. Open doors be open wide for you, brothers and sisters. Open wide to get into that kingdom. Like I said, I got two short scriptures left. 1 Corinthians 2 and 16. Second, One verse. Second Corinthians. Uh, that's, uh, we'll see when we get there. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes I can't read my own writing. 1 Corinthians 2. Because we got to make sure, brothers and sisters, we in that mindset of being a spiritual brother and sister, growing in, in spirit and in truth. And we picked this up at uh, when the uh, first chapter of uh, First Corinthians, second chapter, I picked it up at verse 15. Wait a minute, uh, yeah, 15. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judge of no man. Uh -huh. For who have known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. But we have the who? Mind of Christ. And Christ is God, brothers and sisters. One of the Godhead members. That's what he's doing. He's developing us in his mind. Now we've got to have a body to go with it. Let's go to Philippians, the third chapter. Philippians, the third chapter, last scripture. I'm picking up verse 20. For our conversation is in heaven. In other words, our lifestyle, how we behave and how we think, uh, with th how we do things. Read. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Verse 21. Read that again. Who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things 
unto himself. So he's working on our mind now, brothers and sisters. And at the end of the day, at his coming, whether you're dead or alive, he's going to change that body. That it's going to be fashioned like his glorious body because your mind is already coming, working his way to perfection. Because in the mind, you got to overcome, you got to overcome, and you got to overcome. And then you do that through the fruits of the Spirit, brothers and sisters. I hope you got some understanding. And may the Lord continue to increase you in his word. Amen. Amen. And by the way, then you'd be after God's kind, spirit being.